Hello and welcome back to the ESM 101 series. Uh, this is the third session, so this is the 103. Uh, we're going to be digging into filters, active channels, and field sets specifically. Now, if you remember from the first session where we talked about the life cycle, we do need to have a way that we can understand how we can look at those events and how we can understand what's going on. So how, how do we filter them? How do we restrict them? How do we put those into an active channel so we can see them? And how can we restrict the total number of fields viewed so we can see them relevant data we want to view? So the agenda, we're going to look at filters, field sets, and actually step through an active channel demonstration of how they would match accordingly. So where it all begins, and it's the filter. Basically, this is probably the single biggest component and element of how to use ESM and how to get it to drive content. It becomes a central constructual element that we need to use. You filter everything down. You're looking for specific events. You want to view certain events. You use a filter to do that, whether it's a view for an active channel, whether it's a restriction as part of a report, or whether it's part of the overall uh, correlation process that we want to restrict certain elements that are matching. So in this case, a filter, and it can be reused across all of this as well. So don't think that you have to define multiple filters. A single filter can be reused in multiple locations. In ESM, the filter is just the Boolean logic to gather the view of the actual events we want to look at. Uh, and there's multiple operators that we can apply, but just bear in mind that they vary according to the data type. So if you're looking at IP address fields, then you can use certain filter operations and they wouldn't apply to a string field. So just bear that in mind with relevance to the uh, schema and the events and the fields you're looking at specifically. We can also use variables uh, and create variables that can manipulate some of those filters as well. So what does it look like? Well, here's a, a very simple, straightforward uh, filter. So we can see some uh, some conditions here. Uh, we can see that there's an or uh, Boolean operator. We can see that the name has a number of uh, conditions that need to occur. So uh, the, uh, the name is desired event name or the name is not equal to desired event name or name is in a particular sequence or name starts with or ends with or is not null or contains. We can see that there is a number of uh, conditions there. That's not a great example, but it just gives you a scenario that you can see that we can do some string operators. We can also do some IP operators as well. So, of course, being an IP address, we know how this construct works. We can define things like between uh, a particular range. We can do in. We can do in subnet calculations. We can do direct matches, or we can do greater than or less than as well, or combinations thereof as well. Again, this is just defining the Boolean logic, uh, and you can do combinations of all those as well. But like I said, um, operators on those particular fields based on the field type. So if it's an IP address, it has one set of operations. If it's a string, it has a different set of operations. If it's an integer, it has a different set of operations again. If you get really confused by the sequencing, don't forget, whenever you see a filter, you'll see a little tab that appears next to it, and it'll say summary. If you just click that, it'll actually break that summary down. It'll give you everything within parentheses. Now, again, I mentioned in the previous session, uh, those parentheses will make a change to the way the Boolean operator works uh, and how those evaluations are done. So if you're not seeing and not understanding how things are actually being displayed and how you think it should be operating, just look at the summary. You can see the, the, the operator in a particular sequence. Remember, the, the, the way that the Boolean logic works is you, within the parentheses, you do the evaluation, then you apply it to the next calculation on from there, and so on. So it's a good way of doing things. Uh, certainly recommend that and using that as a summary view. Uh, and of course, uh, you, you can actually look at the uh, uh, copy and paste uh, into your favorite editor and just make sure that you can change things from that point of view as well. So you can edit it in that point too as well, just so you know. So how are those filters processed? They, they, they seem to be processed from a top down, but just bear that in mind there's no easy way to change that processing. Remember, it's done on Boolean logic. It's done on the evaluation process. Uh, and just think about some of the processing efficiency here. So 
you know, if you think about things like equals and not equals, that's a very precise calculation. It is equal to something or it's not equal to something. There's no additional calculation needed. Uh, things like starts with and ends with is very specific, but it's a lot more efficient on processing than contains. So if you, if you have to do a string comparison, you have to use contains, consider what you're doing because it's going to be quite intense way of doing things. Um, there is also a, a little function you allow to uh, remove case from this as well. So if you have to do multiple conditions based on upper and lower case of the characters as well, you can do that. You can also choose it to ignore that as well. Uh, and again, if you have to break things down, consider things like request URL. In some cases, you might actually find this is automatically derived down into other fields. Again, we mentioned this in the first session, where in, in a lot of cases, the framework will actually break those down for you rather than having to do all that calculation, which is actually inefficient within the correlation engine or using a filter specifically. So um, just consider that. Uh, understand the order and the sequencing of the processing, understand how the parentheses change how the evaluation goes as well. Uh, it is Boolean logic, it's very straightforward from that point of view, but just understand that of, of how we do the processing as well. Now, we're going to look at field sets. Now, what is a field set? Well, this changes the way that you view the data and allows you to have a customizable and personal view of the fields in order and down to restriction set as well. So it gives you a really good way to look at that and to apply that data. Now, from an administration point of view, we could also use field sets to restrict how users can see some of the data. So they, there will be certain fields that they can't see. Uh, alternatively, you might want to use that as a personal way of restricting some of the fields from view so you don't have to consume extra CPU cycles to retrieve data or process data as well. So probably the best example is to actually show what it is. So it allows you to have a particular restricted view on what the particular fields are that you can see. So in this case, we can see we're, we're creating a field set and we can restrict it down to particular types of fields to show. And we can rearrange them in a particular order as well. Um, you can use those to restrict uh, how you view them in the fields, how you view them in a filter, or even how it's viewed as part of an active channel as well. Uh, you'll see that that there is a drop down as part of the common conditions editor. So you'll see that whenever you create a filter or a view, uh, and you'll see how you can restrict those uh, field sets down. So there was a, a, a quick walk through of some of the combinations and uh, background elements of to do with filters and how we can use field sets to uh, change them and what some of the conditions and Boolean logic that we can apply as well. So thank you very much.